Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. I've been saying it like that since I got it, too. All right. Got a good one for you today. Yesterday, the other day, I was talking to you about the most effective weapon available to us as human beings, I think, is prayer. I think prayer helps us in so many ways. But right now, what I want to do is I want to show you how prayer pays off. I want want to show you what good it can do for you. Even me, I use it every day. And and the days I don't use it, I feel it. The, the, The days that I go, you know, without talking to him as much, I notice it, I feel it, I feel a certain kind of way. You know, those, uh, those, that doubt starts slipping in again, that uneasy feeling of uncertainty slips in again, that, that wondering what I'm going to do starts slipping in again. It happens to me. It happens to everybody, man, I think. I, re- I really, really do. You know, if people would just keep it real with each other, stop being this Christian, this Superman, because you ain't. You ain't. There's a scripture that says there's none perfect. No, not one. And that's everybody. That, that, that cover all of us, don't it? So sometimes I think we're a little too hard on each other. Uh, with that too, seeing as how we not perfect, we immediately want to just, just, oh man, you just want to kill when we find somebody do something wrong. Especially if it go public, everything go public now called social media. But anyway, I just want to talk to you about how prayer pays off. I mean, it's called the ROI in money. People got money, call it ROI, so return on investment. People are always looking for a return on investment. You know, nobody. Nobody in business really gives you money without understanding the return on investment. They don't even give monies to charities unless they think it can do something with the bottom line. A lot of companies work like that. I found that out myself. Sad, but it is true. So since everything is expected to work on a return on investment, I assume because we're human beings. So since we're all human beings, whether you're in business or, or not, you're still in the business of living. I think when you pray, you should expect a return on your investment. You talk to him. You spent time opening up to him. You bowed your head to him. You humbled yourself. You got on your knees. I mean, but really we talking God here. So really what you doing ain't really about nothing. Be honest with you. The little bit that you do do on his behalf. It it, it just pales in comparison with what he does. But let's just say you want to call yourself investing. 
Well, let me show you how it pays off. This Because, see, for me, this is for me now, prayer pays off in different ways. That's what I had to learn. See, I was praying, but I was asking him specifically for what I wanted. I had the audacity, though, to turn around and tell him how to do what I wanted. <laughs> That's amazing, man. I can't tell you how many blessings I block coming my way by putting my faith in what I said I wanted and how I wanted him to do it. I want you to give me this. I want that person to go away. I want this person to accept everything you say. Then I want to go over here and I want this deal to happen like this. And I want that person to just step aside and let, let me through. And then I want that. I, was, I had it mapped out. God must have been chuckling really hard. <laughs> he had to be going, boy, I made you to be funny, but boy, you're funny now. So you're going to tell me how to do it. And you've all heard this right here. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan. Well, that's what I did. And that's how we pray a lot of times. We pray, and we pray in the prayer we're telling him how to work it out. Well, here's the deal. This is what I've learned. Prayer pays off in different ways. There's a different return of my investment when I pray. See, sometimes when I'm praying for something, a situation to dissolve itself or go away, sometimes I get courage out of the prayer. Prayer provides me courage. That's just to go on and look at it, I guess. Face it. Then sometimes when I'm praying, about a situation. Sometimes prayer gives me hanging power. Sometimes, man, it just, I look up and I'm just handling it better. Sometimes prayer gives you laugh it off power. Sometimes, man, you just got to laugh it off. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> you tripping. Do you know what that is if you could do that? You know, sometimes it gives it gives you a show of strength power. Sometimes prayer allows you to have the appearance that you got it all together. Nobody got to know the whirlwind, the, the tornado, the hurricane that's swirling in your life. You standing over there like the eye of the hurricane. You just And it's all swirling around you, but you standing there like the eye. You just as calm. That's what prayer does. So when you pray, man, it builds up a lot of things in you. You know what it's done for me? Prayer has built up character in me. It's made me have more character because I'm able to stand stronger on the things I say because I've been praying, because I've been asking God for all of those return of investments. I've been asking God for courage. I've been asking God for hanging that power. I've been asking him to give me the power to walk away. I've asked him to give me ignored power. I've asked him to help me laugh it off. I've asked him to show me strength. But you know what I was doing? I was really praying, not really for them things, be real with you. I was asking him to help me. Lord, help me. You ever done that? You ever asked God for help? And then all of a sudden a list of these things show up? See, sometimes how you want the problem to be solved ain't the best way. There's a lesson to be learned when we make mistakes. And sometimes you got to stay in that fire and you got to learn that lesson. But guess what, though? When you come out of it, you're going to be better for it. You're going to know more about it. Come on, y'all, pray. He's solid. His word is true. It lasts forever. He do what he say he's going to do now. All day. All night. 24-7. He do it all day, all night, and then some more. His word don't ever change. It's true. It works for me. It worked for you. It worked for Jake's. It worked for Osteen. It worked for Kirk Franklin. It worked for Paula White. It worked for Billy Graham. It worked for Mother Teresa. It worked for Gandhi. It worked for princes, Arabs. It worked, man. It worked for you. What you waiting for? Why don't you put prayer in your game? Watch what happened to you. You sitting in that jail cell and you struggling with it and they telling you blood in, blood out, you can't get in you. That's foolishness, man. What you mean? God can get you out of anything. Look, man, if you done read your Bible, he done got some people out of some sticky situations. I don't know what you talking about. If Daniel was in the lion's den and Jonah was in the belly of the whale, what you talking about? Where you are? You just sitting in a cell with some dudes around you talking about what they going to do. Man, you got to be real. God can't nothing do nothing. Nobody do, can't nobody do nothing to you. God won't give you the strength to handle. Prayer changes things, man. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is here, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, live, vivid, color, rolled up. This is like a, uh, today's show is going to be like a, uh, I would say like a fruit roll up, but I've never had one, so, and they don't look like they taste that good, so we're going to use, we're going to kill that enough. Are they good, Shirley? Yeah, I don't eat them a lot, but I think they're good. You know what I used to love, though? Pop-Tarts. We finna have a oh. pop tart morning. Brown maple cinnamon sugar. Woo! Shirley Strawberry. I, did, I never liked pop tarts, but um, Girl. I knew a lot of people who did, yeah. Girl, straight out the toaster. <laughs> I thought I had something right there. <laughs> anyway, good morning, Steve. Pop tart to you. That's right, Carla for real. Good morning, good morning, and I love me some pop tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Show do. Junior. Uh, strawberry, strawberry hot. But mm. of course, darling. <laughs> Nephew Tommy. Yeah, yeah. I pop tart it every night. Every night, you know, pop tart. I ain't had a pop tart in years. Years. Yeah, that's, that's like Twinkies. When's the last time you had a Twinkie? Well, if you years. have kids, you eat them. I had a pop tart the other day, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about a Twinkie? When last you had Twinkies? No. No judging. When last time I had a Twinkie? Yeah, you. Oh, no, I ain't had a Twinkie in years. I don't even know. They don't taste the same. Tell you what I did have, though, well, not recently, but when I was driving up on the highway of Moon Pie. Oh. I used to buy Moon Pies (laughs) just to stay awake. Moon Pie (laughs) and a Joke Cola, girl. Oh, that's sugar on top of sugar. You're mixing all kinds of sweets. I need that this morning to tell you the truth. <laughs> okay. Get that sugar rush going. <laughs> I need, I, I want to ride that high. That sugar high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard to make sweet sometimes. Not, yeah. not when I was young. Oh, okay. Because one cancels out the other, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, you, how you going to cancel out candy? <laughs> it, it don't. <laughs> You know, if, like if you eat some, a donut with a soda or something. Oh, yeah. You used to yeah. do that all the time. RC Cola <laughs> and a Hostess Cherry Apple Pie. No. Yes. Sodas went with, like, chips and stuff. But look at me. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm straight with you. Hog heaven. Delicious. I don't see the problem. Delicious, kid. <laughs> uh, I don't like mixing my sweets like that. <laughs> what? Mm-mm. I had to have something. If I had something sweet, I had to have something savory or salty with it. Yeah, I didn't understand. I didn't understand put, putting salt on the water. That just didn't make sense. To me. It was Shh. good though, boy. Got a grapefruit salt on the sugar. watermelon. Dog, sugar on the grapefruit, salt, <laughs> pepper on the watermelon. <laughs> Not pepper. Had all that. Pepper yeah. too. Well, see, y'all wasn't poor as me, so you had to turn a lot of stuff into meals. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a steak, Steve. All you right. got to get some flavor out this because this is <laughs> Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, it is time for Ask the CLO right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to Ask the CLO. Our chief love officer, Steve Harvey, is in the building. This one is from Tina in Seattle. Tina writes, I'm 44 years old and my husband is 54. He's in a men's organization and we have a lot of social engagements that we attend. The other wives are very bougie and I feel as though I don't fit in because I don't wear brand names and designer labels like they do. I've told my husband that I'm uncomfortable and he suggested I get my makeup professionally done for the next event and get a stylist to help me shop. I'm not that type of woman, and I don't enjoy these events. Should I try to please him by fitting in? Well, listen, you don't have to do nothing. You're an adult woman. You get to make decisions yourself. If you don't like it, don't go. But now, somebody down there dressed up. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Somebody down there with the makeup on. That's the other side of the game. You know, Mm -hmm. that's what he liked. That's what he wants. Now, if you don't want to give it to him, once again... Absolutely your priority. You do not have to. Mm. 
Somebody down at the men's organization mm-hmm. got all that on. Professionally done, stylish. Maybe, maybe, maybe he said, "Wow, I like that. I wish my girl did that." Now, once again, you don't have to. Maybe you one of them people that think he got to take you the way he is. You know, she you could do she's that. Not that kind of woman. That's well, you know, you ain't that kind of woman. Okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. I, I ain't mad at you, sister. You don't have to be. I think she should try it. Yeah, well, that's my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once again, I can't, you know, I haven't been in a lot of HR meetings, so I know not to say certain things. So just that do like, like you right. want to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, go and do like you want to. All right, Tina. Moving on to Kennedy. Your damn self. Excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kennedy in Detroit says, My boyfriend and I have been together for a few years and we're open and honest about everything. He said, I am the love of his life. But he often mentions how he broke up his, uh, broke his last girlfriend's heart by cheating on her. He told me he texted her one day recently to see how she's doing and to make sure she doesn't still hate him. Is it normal for him to want to fix things with her? Yeah. What? Let mm. that ride. Come on, Cielo. Um, tell me what you talking about. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening, you know. No, you said yes. something. What you about? Let that well, he, ride. He's, he, he feels bad for what he's done. So he wants to at least apologize. He's moved on. No. He got a new girl. For no. Me, right? no. You don't no. see that? No. That ain't what he's doing. What he he doing? called to see if she still hate him. Because if she don't, he got some conversation for her. You want to go back. I see. Dog, ain't no man. Men don't even do closure. And he ain't trying to get closure. You want to see if she still hate me. Yeah. And if she don't, then what? Where, where we go after that? Uh-huh. So I ain't the, with it, dog. So the girlfriend's question, is it normal for him to want to fix things with her? To her, you say. Fix it for what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fix it for what? You cheated on the girl. You broke her heart. What? You want to fix what? You can say, I'm sorry. But you probably tried that already, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. he did well, that. He, yeah. Yeah, he did yeah. That. So it's not normal for a guy to want to do that. That's, that's the what, answer that's to her that's question. What God, that's what the guy y'all got to race. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Frankie in Charlotte says, I'm a 33-year-old married woman, and I'm in a situation with my husband's stepfather. I had a baby three months ago, and his stepdad has been watching the baby for us because the babysitter has COVID. I went to get the baby yesterday, and he said, as fine as I am, he's sure my husband will knock me up with baby number two soon. I was disgusted, and I want to tell my husband, but I know better. Uh, Should I tell my mother-in-law about this or not? Mm. I mean, what did he do? He said, you fine as heck. And he know your husband gonna knock you up with baby number two. That's what the complaint is. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. What she said she was disgusted by that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I understand that. But what what what, what you want to do though? Mm-hmm. Old ass dude said something to you. <laughs> I mean, what I don't see what he said. Fine as you is, I know he gonna knock you up with baby number two. That disgusted Ew. you. That's a pass. Ew. That too, bro. You know that's a pass. That, that's not even hard. But she didn't like it. It made her feel uncomfortable. Well, if you go and tell the mother-in-law what she going to say, you is kind of fine, though. That's all Herman, he do that. <laughs> That's all that is. She'll be mad at her. <laughs> Not Herman. <laughs> Girl, Herman been saying that type thing to women since we was, we was 16. <laughs> hmm. So should she tell her husband about his stepdad? No. I mean, what you going to tell him? I mean, you could tell him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay, tell him, but I mean, I don't understand. what What's she so upset about? She didn't like it. Obviously, it made her uncomfortable, you know? She okay, this ain't disrespect. in the workplace. Well, it doesn't have to be in the workplace. It could be anywhere if you feel uncomfortable about something someone says to you, especially an older yeah, man. I, but, Shirley, I understand dad. that. But if we, mm-hmm. but there ain't no HR department in your family. <laughs> right. You still got to be respectful, though, But dog, she, you know. she feels uncomfortable, so she wants to know, should she tell someone? Uh, yeah, tell your husband. <laughs> it's his stepdad. Right, but I, I don't, they going to play that off as, I just told her she was fine. I know he going to knock her up with baby number two. Mm. 
Maybe it was the way he said it or something. I probably was, Looking but he an old ass said. black dude. Come on now. Mm-hmm. And you and you done dropped the baby off at his house. Mm-hmm. You went over to his house, he said something in his house. Mm. He probably sounded like Dom, like that dirty old man character. He probably yeah. sounded just uh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, you so fine. You so fine, well. they will knock you up again with two times. I would Double immediately dump on that. Double hold that thing and, you got there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right there. Ugh, disgusting. Like <laughs> I don't think we have t- time for an- another one. Well, since but, we ain't uh, got time, Shirley, what color lipstick is that you got on? Is that lavender? What is that? Uh, <laughs> fuchsia, fuchsia lavender? What is that? Fuchsia. Let's just go to break. Let's We're go to break. Them. Go to break. Coming up next, the nephew <laughs> would run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Anna standing by with today's national news. But right now, the nephew's here with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? I left my comb and brush. I left my comb and brush. Let's go, cat dog, if you would. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Mr. Yeah, this is. Hey, listen, my name is uh, Sean. Uh, did you have a uncle that passed away named Yep. Uh-huh. All right. He your uncle, right? Yeah, that's my uncle. We we, we read him about three and a half months ago. Right. The well, well, reason why I was calling was I'm the person that actually cut your uncle hair when he passed away. Okay. So the uh, reason why I was calling uh-huh. is uh, the situation is when I cut his hair, and, and I know you don't know the history about me, but my, my daddy and my granddaddy was, was barbers. We all barbers. Okay, get, so, I mean, come on, bro. Get down to the bottom because you're talking about my uncle, man, and I'm trying to see what's going on for real. Okay, and I'm sorry to call you like this, but what I'm telling you is that my, my granddaddy and my daddy, they, they had passed down a brush and a comb to me. Okay. That is, is like a sentimental value. Okay. But for the for the last... Two, three months, I ain't been able to find the, the the comb and the brush that I used when I had cut his hair. Okay, so, okay, go ahead. And what I was trying to call and tell you was that I can't find it, and I'm almost certain. What what I'm trying to okay, say what, is... I'm okay, what, I'm okay, so, so, so what can I do to help you find comb and brush, Bobby? That's what I'm saying. When I did Miss <laughs> hair and, and edged it up at the funeral home, that's the last time I remember having it. But this was three months ago, man. Right, right. It was about three months ago. What I'm trying to say is I left the comb and brush, and, you know, went to the funeral home and did his hair. Okay. And I talked to the funeral home, and they told me that, you know, if I'm trying to find a comb and brush, I got to get permission. Man, what the color is the comb and brush? What's the color of the comb and brush? It's black. They both of them black. The comb is black and oh. the brush. He got all kind of combs that black and go on, man. No, no, no. See what I'm saying is the comb and brush is black, and I know I lost it, but I'm almost certain on, about where it is. Okay, so if you certain about where it is, why you calling? That's, that's the reason why I'm calling you, cause I'm almost certain I left it with him. You left it with my dad. So, so I called the funeral home. They told me I need to call you in order to get permission to get it. Okay, you call the funeral home to get permission from me that you can go get the comb and brush. From where? The funeral home? So you can go down there and say, got it. No, no, no. See, the, the, the comb and brush ain't with the funeral home. The comb and brush is in there with your uncle. The what? The comb and brush hold is up, in the casket. Hold, hold up, hold up, man. With the, you, you, hold up. I, I mean, I don't say, you got to say that again. What, you well, say what that? I'm trying to say to you is that the comb and brush is in the, I'm trying to say and just say what you're saying. I'm saying, saying it, man. The, the comb and brush is in the casket with your uncle. If it's in there, it's six feet. Well, see, what I'm trying to say is that the comb and brush is sentimental value to me. Bro, it couldn't have been too valuable if you lost it. Well, no, what it was, I value, you know, my work. So I just really got caught up in well, my you work. Value really. Too much- if you talking about you done left it with my uncle that's dead three months ago, man. What kind of shit are you talking about, homeboy? All I'm trying to do with you is see if, if you don't mind approving for them to bring the body up so I can get the comb and brush. <laughs> you lost your mind. 
But see, right. the value of for a cone. But, but see, but what I'm trying to explain to you, this sentimental value. I'm trying to get y'all to bring the body up so I can get my comb and brush out of it. Because like I say, my daddy and my granddaddy was born. Dude, this whole thing is sentimental, man. You talking about my dead uncle, man. And you talking about bringing him up out of the ground for a comb, man. I just got these to stop crying around here. And I, and I understand what y'all going through as, as a family and stuff. See, man, I'm trying to just get my comb and brush. Hey, man, and how you trying to go about doing this all thrown off on, boy? Because ain't nobody digging up no body to bring back no no brush, man. Now, you got me pissed off now, man, because you're calling me talking stupid, man. You talking about putting on my uncle, man. That's, man, that's not hey, man, it, man. man, I ain't trying to start no comb. You talking about comb and brush, man, all these Walmart right Okay, up. but I understand all that, but this is sentimental value, man. Well, this is sentimental to me, man. This is something that my, my people love me. My sentimental to me, okay? That was my favorite uncle, man. Okay, listen. You talking about pulling up this body, man? I got it, oh, boy. Hey, man, man, I'm not, I don't want no, no... If you been cutting my uncle there that long, man, you should know how he operate, man. And we don't get out like this here, man. I, man, I ain't finna sit here and argue with you. Look, I got some people... Ain't no argument. I got some people that's here... I mean, where you stay at, man? Okay, let me say this, man. I got some people that's here with me right now. You know, some of my friends, and we got some shovels. So I can actually go over there and, and go on and get the cone and brush it out. And in the morning, ain't nobody going to even know. You ain't going to go get s*** now, but s*** whoop it all, boy. Say what? You don't get s*** but s*** whoop it. You don't dig up s*** whoop it. So go on and get a cone and a I got some shovels, too. You talking about go to the cemetery and try to dig up my hook? Hey, man, I'm going to go on and tell you this right here. S*** on with you, Hey, man, I'm trying to get my comb and brush back. I ain't trying to have no problems with you. But I want my comb and brush. Who the hell do you think you're talking to, man? Go to Walgreens. Go to Walgreens. Go to Walmart. Go to Safeco. They got them. Hey, man, ain't nobody. This ain't even about your uncle. There's more than that. This and you ain't even got no room to be hollering at me all day. Ain't nobody hollering at you, man. All I'm telling you is I got a comb and brush in your uncle casket. You might want to dig too. Say what? I'm going to bust and you're going to fall right over in there. Around, yeah? So what you think? You trying, to, you, you trying to dig a grave for me? Man, do you know how long this bed I've been trying to get these out here? Stop crying and man. Shut up, man. I dare you to with this body. I dare you to with this man. Fuck, boy. I understand what you're going through. I do. Man, who the f is this, man? I told you. I don't want to cry in here. And I want my You sound like a f come up digging up somebody's body, man. Over comb in a bush. I I got it. I just tried to call you like a man. Cause I want to get the comb and brush. And I didn't want to go without getting your permission. Now if I gotta go without getting your permission, I will cry with me. You don't know me. The cry with me. Yeah, it's just cry with me. It's sentimental to me. Just cry with me. Your I want to say something else to you. You ain't doing Are you listening? What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy, man. Man, you a man. <laughs> Hello? Uh... Hey. <laughs> you just got pranked by your boy, <laughs> I think I needed that cry. <laughs> hey, man, I got to ask you, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? You know like I know. Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Did show I get you, man? Oh, man. Give me ain't the word, man. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment and national news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In celebrity divorce news, well, things are getting ugly, U-G-L-Y, between Gary Owen and his estranged wife, Kenya. Kenya is putting it all out there on social media. She called Gary a deadbeat dad who hasn't seen his kid in months. And this all started when Gary posted a picture of him wearing a t-shirt that said, breadwinner. Kenya went in with a lengthy post uh, saying, 
She was more of the breadwinner throughout the 23 years they were together. She went on to say that Gary hasn't seen his kids in months and she felt disrespected by his post. Kenya also just filed that she wants $44,000 a month in spousal support. She said that Gary would have $300,000, $600,000 checks from his comedy shows just lying around the house, laying around the house and uh, would post them whenever he wanted to. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Gary you got heard 300 me. and 600. You heard. Me. You, you heard. I've yeah. been performing the same damn place Gary going. What, what is they paying Gary? 300 and 600,000 dollars. Gary. We've we been in the same damn clubs. I've been in the same. Thing. Listen to me. That's He got the sweetest club deal I've ever heard of in my entire career. Sinbad. <laughs> Sinbad wouldn't make that kind of money. Uh, we mm. go to the same place as Gary go. Why we ain't making money, Tommy? <laughs> So you do that's what y'all got out the, this story. Yeah, that's Hell yeah. Got you do the math. Yeah. If it's three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> and it's three hundred seats in there, tickets got to be a thousand dollars to see Gary. <laughs> Boy. And we were here every morning. <laughs> <laughs> a little salty, Junior, huh? What? <laughs> Well, anyway, his wife is upset because I need to talk to my she... agency. I'm, I'm hold on, hold on, Shirley. It ain't no anyway. Can... Me and Tommy going through something. Go, T. Yeah. I, no no I don't know, about know what y'all is. are failures. Because <laughs> Gary is making yeah. three and six hundred thousand dollars for club dates. Six hundred thousand dollars, dog. You'll be out there every week. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> How many shows you got to have? But, uh, to get six hundred. Why you ain't back out here? Why you ain't back out here, huh? Six hundred thousand. Why you ain't back out here? Mm. Nah, he ain't but, gonna do six hundred. He ain't gonna do six hundred. But wait a minute, that's what you guys got out of it. This is what we got out of it. He's making what? that kind of money, and she's only asking for forty-four thousand dollars a what month. I'm saying. Uh, oh that's what gosh. we got out of it. Oh the ladies. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, comedians, right now. we went another direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. six hundred thousand. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's a lot yeah. of money. He got anyway. him laying around. He got laying around, Tom. <laughs> Just laying around from his comedy shows. That's what his wife said in her post. <sighs> well, we're moving on in uh, other entertainment news. Mariah Carey is slamming the rumors that she and Jay Z got into a heated argument because she decided to leave Rock Nation's uh, management. Mariah posted, the only explosive situation I'd ever get into with Hove is creative tangent, such as our number one song, Heartbreaker. To the people who make up these lies, I say poof, vamoose, son of a blank. There you mm. go. Mm. There you go. There you <laughs> leave have. her alone. Yeah. So Mariah and Hove are not beefing. Yeah, she'll leave her and, alone. And d- d- mm-hmm. Those two people don't even have that type of... Demeanor about themselves. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, I could see if they, you know, have some different, some creative differences, but come on now, not to, I not to argue. explosive situations. Ain't nobody in that story making six hundred thousand. <laughs> you back, you back to Gary, you back to that comedy club. Ooh, they scraping down cold paper, dog. Oh. Both of them got plenty oh. paper. Oh. <laughs> Gangster. <laughs> All right, Steve, time for headlines. I'm going to just announce Miss Ann Tripp so I can talk to these two failures. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Ann Tripp with the news. Good morning, everybody. Oh, boy. And I got to come with the serious stuff. Vice President Kamala Harris met with Guatemala's president in Guatemala City yesterday with the aim of finding ways to stem the migration out of the country to the U.S. And she was kind of blunt. The goal of our work is to help Guatemalans find hope at home. At the same time, I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. And she repeated that, do not come. The vice president says she and the Guatemalan leader discussed lessening poverty and corruption in that country, which would thereby give people a reason to stay and not leave. The vice president due in Mexico City today on the same mission. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court's dished out some bad news here for the thousands of people who came here to this country illegally and say they need to be able to stay here for humanitarian reasons. The high court has ruled that TPS, that's temporary protected status, is just that. 
temporary so that those currently under TPS will not be allowed to apply for green cards to remain in the U.S. permanently. They will not. Thousands of immigrants are allowed to stay in the country temporarily uh, because of crises in their home countries and things like war and natural disasters. Sometimes it's gang activity they're able to prove. But again, the high, the uh, right leaning the right leaning Supreme Court says that TPS or temporary protected status is just that temporary. A black man in Springfield, Illinois, is suing the police department there over an incident that took place last year. His name is Dartavius Barnes. He says he was stopped by white cops in April of 2020 for allegedly speeding. He was handcuffed, put in a squad car, and when the police searched his car, they claimed they found a huge jar of marijuana and took it out to have it tested. Well, Barnes says it was in the jar. It was an urn containing the ashes of his recently deceased daughter. He's suing them for desecrating her remains. If white cops haven't looked bad enough these days for them in a kind of SWAT-like uniforms and two dogs pose for a picture with a captured black robbery suspect. This is a bunch of Prentice, Mississippi cops. They had the black man's shirt off and it looked like a real fugitive slave situation. Everybody was running around grinning. And uh, sad news. Love. Exciting. And Gavin McClaw, the, doc, the uh, actor that played Captain Steubing, has died. Gavin McClaw was 90 years old. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, so here are some financial questions for you. If you have extra money at the end of the week or at the end of the month, what's your instinct? Is your instinct to look for something to spend that money on? Are you excited to put that money away in savings? Or, or do you automatically look to pay down some debt? All right? So, Steve, you're where the money resides. You can go first or you can go last. Well, go ahead, Tommy. I'm stacking it. I'm putting it in. Yeah, the I knew that would be your answer. That's, that's Please me. answer. I'm uh-huh. stacking. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you're you're excited to put the money in your savings. Yeah, I like. If you savings. have extra money at the savings. end of the week, mm-hmm. or at the end of the oh, month. Okay. okay, Junior, you're next. Uh, sure. Junior, what stack? Do you want to? Do you want to spend it? Why? Do you want to save Why? it? Why should? Why I stack anything? <laughs> Y'all see me over here, been by myself for a year. I'm out here for ladies. I got dinner. Dinner. Who want dinner? You want some dinner? Come on, I got it. I you stunting, I, I, Junior? Hey, I'm stunting out here. Call me, I'm stunting. So you're going to spend yours. Okay. Girl, okay. y'all see my truck. It's paid up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Junior. Ready. Stupid. Ready. All right, Ready. come on where the money resides. You want to well, spend Well, I mean, it? to be you honest, wanna... my initial uh-huh. inclination mm-hmm. is to go buy something. Yeah, to spend. But then the uh-huh. better judgment of me. Uh-huh. says, I don't put it away. I always look to invest. invest. Saving money, money is is fine. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with it at all. But I look for investments mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, if you if you a common person, just a regular mm-hmm. working person, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, the Acorn app is a great thing to get where all of your change rounds up to the nearest dollar or you can make an arrangement where they take out more. But all of your change can be put into an account and they invest it for you. Oh. The stuff like that's out there, man, where, okay, like, for example, you pay a card. You got Acorn. Mm-hmm. And you pay your card through your Acorn app. And uh-huh. let's say you pay it with a $20, you know, something costs, you know, $30.48. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll okay. round it up. You could say round it up to the nearest 5 and the nearest $10 or the nearest dollar. Mm-hmm. Let's say you spend 32 and you say round it up to the nearest 10 then they'll charge you $40, but they'll take the $8 and put it in an investment account for you. Oh, nice, nice. Or you okay. can say round it up to the nearest dollar and you spend thirty-four twenty-five. they'll put $0.75 cent in the investment mm-hmm. for you. And that's a smart way to grow yeah. your money instead of just saving. That's a, just a suggestion. Yeah. So so your your initial instinct would be to spend it, but... Oh, you're, hell yeah. You're, yeah. You, but you're like, rich. You ain't never, you ain't never been me. Dog, I've been everybody on this show. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why you at? I don't know what that might be, but you know how I feel. I've been everybody on this damn show, and I've been some places y'all ain't been. Uh, uh, I've been way right. below the poverty line. I've been in the dark y'all ain't seen. So, don't ask me that, Junior. You ain't never been. No, you ain't never been. All right. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to talk about June being Black Music Month. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, we all know it's here. June, June, June is here. And June is Black Music Month. 
uh, and we celebrate black music every June. Um, and so what we're asking you guys to do is name the five songs, uh, the five songs that make you turn up the volume. I don't care where you are, just turn it up. That's my song, that's my jam. Whatever, Steve, your five, your top no, five no, songs. No, no, let Tommy he laugh. He laugh. Humpty dance, Humpty dance, Humpty dance, Humpty dance, Humpty dance. Yeah, sorry. Right. Keep on, okay, that's Tommy. Keep on, him. Okay, Junior, what's your name? Keep on, him, sir. Yeah. Okay, Humpty <laughs> dance. <laughs> See. <laughs> okay, Humpty dance. Can't let go, Anthony Hamill. A song for you. Donny Hathaway. Donny Hathaway. Uh, practice what you preach. Oh, very white. Very white. Uh -huh. And of course, oh. what, Charlene? What? No, no, it's the, it's the, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't house is not home. What's the, what's the? I can't oh, remember. You know the name. Luther, it's a Luther song, but it's the party song. Bad boy. Bad, boy. bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. That's what uh -huh. I'm talking about. Okay. That's what you turn That's, That's fine. Come on, Junior. What you got? Joe to see, Joe to see, Joe to see, Joe to see. You already know, sir. <laughs> Diary of a Man. <laughs> Play the up. album. <laughs> everything. Play the album. <laughs> I'm doing everything I need to do. Just play the album. Y'all already know I'm feeling me with Joe. I ain't got to tell y'all. That's it. <laughs> You so move junior, past me, Nick. Well, tell me what you love so much about Jodeci. Let everybody know why you sure. love them Do so you know much. I love Jody so much because I was in the group. We had we had one fight back in '95. I got uh -huh. kicked out. It ain't my fault. Casey what did you and Jojo got. Group, junior, what did you I do? I played bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who, whose turn is it now? Yeah. What? Somebody. What? That what happened? Yeah. We well, got to do. Uh, that what happened? We knew. <laughs> We we never heard this before. Let's Ever, go. but it What's was good though. All right, the question is your f top five. This is we're celebrating Black Music Month, June. Your top five songs. Turn it up whenever you hear it. Earth, wind, fire. Earth, wind, fire. Earth, earth wind, and fire. fire. Uh -huh. That's the way of the world. Okay, mm -hmm. number five. In that order, five. Maze. No, just I'm doing five. Just five. Okay. Well, I can do them in order. Go ahead. I'll do them in order. Top five. This is the f number five. Yes. Okay. Zoom Commodores. Yes, sir. Mm. Okay. 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 Number four. Yeah. Adore Prince. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His birthday was the other day. Uh-huh. Yes, it was. Number three. Mm -hmm. Maze. Mm -hmm. After the morning after. Added another after. <laughs> he did, didn't he? <laughs> he did like after <laughs> the morning, after. Come on, come on. After the day before, when all of the fun is over, will you not want me no more? Mm -hmm. yeah. Number two, remember the time mm -hmm. with Michael Jackson. My all-time favorite. Here come. That's the way of the world. Yeah. That's the way of the world. Earth, wind, and fire. Okay. E w. That's a good L. list. Give me them fire right there, man. I'm going. Turn it up. Element. But where's your Jody's though? <laughs> Maybe just a foolish dreamer. Now he's going to sing all five. But <laughs> oh. I don't care. Cause I know my happiness is waiting. Beat what's what's Stevie you anywhere in your five? I didn't, I didn't hear oh, I one. got some Stevies, but I only got five. Yeah. Stevie's Stevie Wonder, mine. that girl. Oh, Stevie yes, Wonder, girl. Rocket Love. Ooh. Boy, I love that song. Right. Okay. You some serious you about this? You took me right in the rocket. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Apple mouth from heaven, you drop me back now to this cold. Oh, well. I would not do that to a dog. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? That was a jam. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Coming up next, the nephew with the prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject is this considered cheating or not? Hmm. Mm. Hmm. 
Mm, we'll get into that a little ask. later. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. What you think? All right. Uh, right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? Calvin done lost his mind. <laughs> Calvin done lost his mind. Let's uh-huh. go, cat diggity. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a Bree, please. This is Bree. Hi, Bree. This is Officer from the Dallas Police Department. Yes. Okay, wanted to give you a call, ma'am. We have your husband, Mr. Calvin. Uh-huh. Is there any way you can actually come down to the police station today? Um, are you sure it's my husband, Calvin? Is he Calvin? Yes, that's my husband. Okay, we have Calvin. He's been picked up for a Class C misdemeanor. And, uh-huh. and I wanted to see if you're uh, able to pick him up. We're not going to press charges. There is a $250 fine that needs to be paid, but we I'm giving you a call. He asked me to call his wife to see if you would actually come and pick him up. So is a $250 fine due as soon as I get there? Uh, yes, we do need the $250 fine. Oh, okay, Lord, because I don't, I don't have it. I'm going to call his mom and get it. But what is he there for? Uh, he was in decent exposure, ma'am. He was in a park. Are you familiar with Lakeside Park? Yeah. Okay, he was out at Lakeside Park, and he was in decent exposure. He had no clothes on. He was with another person, uh, another uh, female out there, and they had no clothes on. Wait a minute. Hold the hell up. You, you, you are making a big mistake. Because Calvin is supposed to be at work. That's what the hell Calvin's supposed to be. Not at a park. So you saying that you saw him? Were you the detective that caught him? I'm not the. Saw him? It's not a detective. There was actually a police officer, ma'am, that actually brought them in. They both were brought in here um, about two hours ago. He's been processed. Huh. He has been processed, but we need somebody to actually come pick him up now. And, okay. And, okay. This get, okay. Well, tell me, um, what is the who is the female? What's the female name? Did y'all arrest her too? Uh, Did she die with him? She has been arrested. She's actually on the other side of the uh, jail. She's on the woman women's oh. side. Okay, can you give me her name? I do not have, have her name in front of me. I will be able to have that a little later. Or, um, but right now, I think more importantly, he's he's actually sitting in a holding tank with not with no clothes on. So I wait a minute. I, I mean, Calvin done lost his god mind. I'm not coming to pick him up for no that. Let me tell you what. You need to be telling Calvin. You need to tell Calvin that he need to come up with two hundred and fifty dollars to get his out that just got himself in, and then he need to come up with some more money to pay for this divorce. Cause I'm handing him these papers, and you tell him, yeah, y'all do it for him. I'm gonna call his mama, and she can come get his. I know well Calvin have his fat no walk this clothes down. Now where he get this old freaky shit from? They probably for all they got to see that. You know that's what they taking now. Uh, uh, you know what, yeah, we'll call his mama and I'm going to tell she ain't going to believe me because I want her to bring her down there. She always on his side, you see. She always on his side. So I want to take her on up there and see her son with his head up there naked. And then and then, then she can she let him explain that. Yeah, but he got to tell him, you tell Kevin, you, tell him, you make sure you tell him that I said that he get himself out of this situation. I'm not coming to get his and he ain't bringing his back here. Let him bring his up here if you want to. Okay, uh, no. uh, Miss Miss Bree. Yes. All right, I just got some paperwork in here uh, about who the actual female he he was uh, arrested with. She was also out there at Lakeside Park. And uh-huh. uh, let's see here. It seems like we Ooh. got a Miss Francis Francis. Uh, uh, Francis. Francis. You sure you found a Francis out there naked? Yes, ma'am. Are you? I'm sorry. Do you know a Francis? Yes, I know Francis. That's my sister. <laughs> okay. Well, can I say something else about your sister? Can I tell you this? Go ahead. Francis has got me to prank phone call you, baby. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Bree, you just got pranked by your sister Francis. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus. If I tell you what I just done, done on this phone, I can't tell you the radio. But Bob Francis, I was getting ready to come up there and knock all four her eyes out. And I know damn well Calvin wasn't up there naked. I mean, he's not doing it like that. I mean, they don't even really get along. I mean, I'm like, 
Is that what that's all about? Really? <laughs> Shoot, I, I ain't got time for all this. I'm going to get you answers. Thank you, though. <laughs> hey, hey, can I ask you something, Bree, baby? What's what's the baddest radio show in the land? Oh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> How about this for a surprise, Francis? If you listen, I'm going to whoop your ass, okay? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. How about this for a surprise? That was a nice way to end it. Okay. Okay, Francis. Tyler, that's the first time I've seen you get out of it that quick. Well, you know what, Francis, she was up there. Mm -hmm. I know, Francis, my sister. I know. I, know I could have stretched hell. that. No, dog, mm -hmm. you said, well, can I tell you something else? Francis so and so told me to prank phone and call you because you had to get out of that. Yeah. Because that sister thing, that had cut her deep, uh -huh. though. She was mm. mad at his mom. <laughs> Francis is dying in some way. She had to the 250. Yeah. What, what is this about? Because she always on his side. She always <laughs> on his side. I want her to go down there and mm -hmm. get him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Ooh, Calvin happy. ain't got it like that. Give me and Calvin naked. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just the thought of that. I'm going to need to have his fat ass at work. I know. <laughs> Calvin played too much. <laughs> oh. oh, man. That was funny. That's the way you do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're proud That's of how yourself, you make... sir. I'm so proud of myself, Carl. I ain't mad. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. You it knew anytime you thing. had naked in it, it was the winner. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let me talk to my people. Tampa, Florida, if you're listening to me, I'm coming June 25th, 26th, 27th. We talking. We trying to add them. So y'all hold tight, all right? We trying to add some shows. I promise you, we're going to get right on that. And uh, in July, it is Virginia Beach, Florida. July 16th, 17th, and 18th. If you're in Virginia Beach area, get your tickets. They on sale right now. And let me give a heads up to Washington, D.C., the nephew is on his way to town. Got two more seasons of Ready to Love added to my belt, and I'm on my way to shoot him in Washington, D.C. I'll be there in July. Can't wait. Ready to love. New cast. Here we go. I was just saying the Lord be blessing him. I said, put the Lord be out there blessing him. He looks like babies and food. <laughs> see, see. Boy, you out there getting it. I'm grateful. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> babies and food. I'm grateful. <laughs> You're a fool now. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a fool. I'm a fool over here. I'm I'm suave, sexy, uh, ho hosty guy over there. You know, Where? I'm different. I changes up. You know. Wait, say that again. Now we will, everybody. I, am I sexy, sure Shirley? Clear. On Friday night. Am I sexy on Friday night? That's Where? all I have. What do you don't mean? I'm ready to love. I don't. See yes. It. No. You don't. I got it. I got it, Shirley. I don't okay. see it. I was thinking. <laughs> At all. What? what, what? The show is sexy. Okay, yeah. so the host has to be sexy if the show's sexy, right? Not necessarily. No, 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 uh, no that's not no. how that works. I, I should have no. known. Call Definitely how it work in this case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, show. Maybe that. other shows. Yeah, but I, but I see you though. You sometimes you wear your hats and yeah, I see you. I see you. Your red bottom sneakers. Boy, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. me uh -huh. Shirley, and they yeah, always fly. got a foot cross so you could see them. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Put your Especially damn more. foot down. Especially the sneakers with the spikes, Steve. The red bottoms uh -huh. with the spikes, with the spikes on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he got a stunt. Steve. Yeah. All, all them is attention getting shoes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ain't enough that it's red bottom. I want the one with the spikes on it. Uh -huh. The one with the sticks on it. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like All right, thank you, nephew. Up next, it is a strawberry letter subject. Is this considered cheating or not? We'll find out in just a few right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click submit strawberry letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Could be yours. You yeah. never know. Mm -hmm. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subjects, is this considered cheating or not? Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been in a relationship for four years, and my boyfriend and I live three hours apart. We've always been in a long-distance relationship, and I thought everything was fine. 
until recently, he started talking about marriage after we dated two years, and he said he would gladly move to Philly to be with me. I got all excited about marriage, and I started preparing myself emotionally and financially to be with him for the rest of my life. Then last year, he started saying that the distance was killing him, and sometimes he just wanted to lie next to me and hold me until he goes to sleep. But he can't because I live so far away. I thought that he would go ahead and propose, but he hasn't. I started visiting him more, but he made excuses when it was time to come see me a few times. I didn't want us to grow apart, so I did whatever I could to keep the sparks flying in the bedroom. I was visiting him one weekend and there was a towel on the back seat and I needed to put groceries in the car. I picked up the towel and it was this, it was crusty and stiff and I am no fool so I, I know what it looked like. I thought it was incredibly tacky of him to leave it in the car and no matter what that substance was on it, um, I asked him about it and he confirmed my thoughts. He said he went out a week or so before, uh, before I got there, and a female friend of his helped him out orally. He said he didn't return the favor to her, but she willingly did him. He said it's not like he cheated wow. and it helped him out because he missed making love to me. I was livid, and all he kept saying was he did this for us, and it's not cheating. I have that. needs too, but I've never had a, a quick hookup with my male friend. Is this cheating or not? Should I break up with him? Uh, yes. Come on. <laughs> this is really cheating. Uh, did he actually fix his mouth to say he did this for us, <laughs> for the both of you? Uh, if it has the word sex in it, uh, it's cheating. Okay. It is cheating, but I don't understand this relationship anyway. I, I really don't. Um, you're doing everything. And I, I thought you guys were getting married. Uh, what happened to all of that? I thought he was moving to Philly. What happened? And, and what's taking so long? He, he has no plans to move. He doesn't even talk about it anymore. Uh, you didn't even say if he's packing, if he has a move in date, none of that. And if, you know, if a person is serious, he would certainly have proposed to you by now. Where's your ring? He didn't put a ring on it. And of course, the distance is a factor. That's why many times long distance relationships don't work out. I mean, what happens when you're apart? Stuff like this happens. Uh, a, a woman, in your case, in his case, can come in and help him out orally, as he says. Uh, you know, when you're apart, you don't know what he's doing. But I guess you do know what he's doing now. A and you wouldn't have known anything if his stupid behind didn't leave that nasty old crusty towel. Ew, in the back seat of his car. Uh, how convenient, by the way. Even after four years, he still hasn't moved. He's playing with you, and he's playing you, and, and now the trust is gone on your part. So I say to you, go ahead and free yourself, uh, free yourself so you can get with a, a, a new man in your same city. All right, Steve? I cannot believe what I just read. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> it's crazy. It this don't make no damn sense. Mm -mm. Okay, lady, you've been in a relationship four years. Y'all live three hours apart. Always been a long just relationship. You dated two years, and finally, he started talking about marriage. He gladly moved to Philly. You started preparing yourself emotionally, financially, be with him the rest of your life. Then last year, he started saying that the distance was killing him, and sometimes he. Can't, he just wanted to lie next to you and hold me till he go to sleep. <laughs> yada, 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 yada. <laughs> right. I thought he'd go ahead and propose, but he ain't. Uh -huh. I started visiting him more, and he made excuses when it's time to come see me a few times. I didn't want us to grow apart, so I did whatever I could do to keep sparks flying in the bedroom. That means she was in there doing monkey flips plus. <laughs> it's oh it's gymnasium equipment mm -hmm. in there. Uh, I was visiting him one weekend, and that was a tie. Here's where the letter I need to comment on. I was visiting him one weekend. Okay. That was a towel on the back seat. <sighs> I needed to put groceries in the car. I picked up the towel, mm -hmm. and it was crusty and stiff. Ew. I'm no fool. I know what it looked like. I thought it was tacky of him to leave it in the car. 
no matter what that substance was on it, I asked him about it, and he confirmed my thoughts. Wait a minute. Here's a woman who says, I picked up the tile. It was crusty and still. I ain't no fool, so I know what it looked like. And I thought it was tacky him leaving in the car. No matter what the substance was on it, I asked him about it, and he confirmed my thoughts. There was too much doubt what it looked like, what I thought it was, what the substance could be. Uh Why did you confirm her thoughts? That's what this whole damn letter's about. And when I come back, this is all we're going to talk about. Why? Uh Why, boy? Why? 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 All right, Steve. Thank you. Hang on to that thought because we'll be back at 23 minutes after the hour with part two of your response. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, is this considered cheating or not? We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. It's time to recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, is this considered cheating or not? Wow. Uh, mm-mm, mm-mm. I said pull yourself together. Wow. Not the why. Wow. This letter don't even have to be. <laughs> Here's a couple that's been in a relationship. Quick recap. Long distance relationship. He was talking about marriage. For three years, he stopped talking about it last year. Talking about he miss her, he just want to lie next to her till he fall asleep. So you didn't want the relationship to go stale. You've been doing everything you could do in the bedroom, keep it fresh. Monkey flips, gymnastic equipment, apparatuses, suitcases, <laughs> luggage, lotions, oil. Simone Biles up in there. Oh, seat. she all the this here with a balanced beam, uneven parallel bar. <laughs> Oh, ticklers, feathers, handcuffs, meat, house shoes, everything is going on. Video cam quarters. Old school. Little people, monkeys. It's all in here. Crazy. And uh, you visit him and he would make excuses for visiting you. I was visiting one weekend, there was a towel on the back seat, and I needed to put the groceries in the car. Picked up the towel, it was crusty and still. I'm no fool, so I know what it looked like. Thought it was tacky of him to leave it in the car, no matter what that substance was on it. I asked him about it, and this damn fool (laughs) confirmed my thoughts. She didn't accuse you of anything, boy. She asked you a question. What is this sticky, crusty stuff that's on this tile? Why in the hell would you confirm her thoughts? <laughs> well, he didn't lie. I, don't him to lie. I don't get that. Want him oh, yeah. to lie? Yeah. yeah. yeah How that truth it. working out for him right now? <laughs> now we're on a national radio show. Uh-huh. With the damn truth. Listen to me, fool, stupid ass boy. <laughs> she said, I'm no fool. I know what it looked like. That's uh-huh. doubt. That's I doubt. thought it was incredibly tacky of him to leave it in the car. I thought that's doubt. No matter what the substance was, she still ain't called it nothing. It's mm-hmm. just substance was. That's doubt. I asked him about it. That's no doubt. And then he confirmed it with his stupid ass. <laughs> now, what would you? What he said that. he went out on a week or so before I got there and a female friend of his helped him out orally. Mm. He said he didn't return the favor to her, but she willingly did him. He said it's not like he cheated and it helped him out because he missed making love to me. I was living, and all he kept saying was that he did it for us. Wow. And it's not cheating. Wow. I have stupid. needs too, but I've never had a quick hookup with my male friend. Is this cheating or not? Should I break up with him? You could have said that tile was any damn thing. That's what I was Except like confirming her. I wasted ice cream on the back seat. That works. That works. That works. You got that. Yes. Crusty ice cream. What is this on this towel? What is that this ain't substance? a towel. That is not a towel, baby. That's wrapping paper. 
It's mm. wrapping paper. It's, it's stiff it and it's crunchy. That's wrapping. It works. <laughs> That's what that is. That's why it works. So well, now she don't know what wrapping with paper you. is. Yeah, you want me? You well, want me to be? She don't know what you. it is. So what we gonna do is we not gonna confirm her thoughts. Uh, Ask but me she knows again, it's sure. a towel. Okay, what is the substance on this towel? Daryl threw up last week. Daryl threw up last week. Cool. That works. Daryl. Why, you... <laughs> Why do you throw it away? Why is it still in here? I don't know. He's just back there. He was back there. I didn't even know it was back there. What were you when you find it? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not turn the questions around. When yeah. you found yeah. it? What is yeah. this? Flip it. What is this? You know, Daryl? What you, you know doing I with Daryl's towel? All right, ask me again. What is the substance on, what is this? I don't know, that's the dog's towel. You don't even have a dog. Daryl got a dog. <laughs> Back to Daryl. <laughs> so Daryl and his dog been in the car. What was okay. Daryl's dog doing in the car? <laughs> that ain't, I don't know, ask me what else it is. <laughs> what Come is on. this substance, what is this? That's candle wax. Mm. Oh, really? That works. That works. That works. That works. Yeah. What do you mean? Daryl died, and I was at his vigil, and he had candles. <laughs> now, Daryl did. Yeah. Daryl Ask me again. What is what this Daryl crusty died? substance? <laughs> what is this? What is I that? don't know. That ain't my tie. Well, why is it in your car? What the hell if I know. That damn Daryl, probably before he died, put it in there. Ask what me again. This? It is crusty and stiff. What is this? That's my mama's toilet seat cover. Oh! oh. <laughs> Ask crusty. me again. What is this? It's That's crusty. antifreeze on that tile. antifreeze was blue. Uh, I yeah. used that tile to wax the car. Any one of them. Yeah. Except... <laughs> Wall, My maybe. girlfriend uh, helped me. Or yeah. boy, yeah. your dumb ass. <laughs> All right, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand, please. And coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, Junior is here with Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, Junior is here with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? What you well, got? Shirley, mm-hmm. Shirley. Lakers. Yes. Knicks, Mavericks, gone home. That's all I got for Sports Talk because this weekend I was in Dallas. I want to say, first of all, thank you everybody for coming out to the race. Uh-huh. And uh, I got to say thank you for being a sponsor for my race. Aww. Yeah, I sent Uncle Pitcher because, you know, his his whole banner was out there and everything. You know, and that was the crazy thing, but, uh, you so You so big. Uh, I work with you every day, but you so big that everybody act like we hang together every day. And that's not true. <laughs> we do. I talk to you every day, Joe. But uh, five everybody, days a week, Monday through Friday. Everybody believes like ain't no way in the world you and Uncle Steve this close. I said it's not true, but you you <laughs> did that for me, and man, I thank uh-huh. you guys. My race was phenomenal. Oh, Junior! I, awesome. man, Congratulations, Junior! Man, I'm tell you something, yeah. Carla. Yeah. My grandmother. Yeah. I gotta give a shout out to my grandmother. My grandmother oh, is my her. backbone. My grandmother. I swear to God. My grandmother was at every event I had this weekend. Aw, she's mm. so sweet and cute. Now, she's That's 70 so years so old, but cute. she had it kicked like she's 25. Though. Yeah, she's yeah, cute. Kicking. Your grandmother is Yeah, really me cute. and my grandmother got into a fight because she had a boyfriend. I'm like, hey, dog, my grandmother too old. You 25. My grandma don't want you. 25? <laughs> yeah. Dude, little 25 year dude trying to step to my grandmother. Man, this dude about to fight. Yeah, your grandmother's wow. really cute. No, She's a fly no. grandmother. Sure. Mm-hmm. He 25. Yeah. Ain't nobody grandma that fly. Ain't nobody grandma that <laughs> not even mine, huh? Oh no, I don't mean that. No. But he uh-uh. like he like he like so what she do? What you mean she, she retired? <laughs> what you mean what she do? She ain't got she no job. For a sugar mama, uh-huh. Man, I I really do, man. I appreciate everybody that came out. We had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for all of and matter of fact, our our home station there, KRNB, they did a great job, man. They came out there and really made Aww. My yeah. race. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. R&B. Yeah, 105.7. Uh-huh. 105. 105.7 came out there and made my race Aww. the flyest, man. And Did you see White Gear? Good. Was White Gear out there? Huh? What's up, T? White Gear. You see White Gear? No, White Gary ain't come, but I did the show um, on, on this station White Gear, with White Gary. I did do that. Okay. 
When I went to town, White Gary was opening radio waves for me. Everybody came out there, man. I had 200 runners out there, man. It was crazy. Wow. That's awesome. It was crazy. Congratulations. It was packed, man. And then, the, and, and then the concert and the day party was just as fly, man. We had mm-hmm. about 300 at the, at the, at the um, day party. So, man, thank y'all so much for all y'all do, man. I appreciate it. I didn't even have no, I didn't have no voice yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't have no voice. That's why I couldn't come in. But I'm telling you right now, I appreciate it. I can't wait for our fourth year. And just the fact you guys support me, and I appreciate you guys, because it's a team effort. It really is. I appreciate We're all family. y'all. We're family. Congratulations, man. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate all y'all, man. It worked out. Good. For the and, it, and it's for a great cause, Sickle Cell. For a great That's cause. It, it is. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Junior, thank you. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, yesterday you were talking about the Mayweather versus Logan Paul fight. Uh, we had a great time <laughs> just sharing information. People may not know you used to be a boxer and all of that, and you that had was a your long time ago, sure. Yeah, I know, I know, it was a long yeah, well, time no, ago. Ain't nobody swung. I ain't yeah. swung a punch in a long ass time. <laughs> <laughs> but Carla wanted to ask you a question, uh, uh, okay. you know, about your experience. Go ahead, Carla. What you got? Well, you know, like you said, Shirley, Steve, we were talking about it yesterday, boxing. And then I wanted to get your opinion again on these celebrity boxing matches, these exhibition fights. Do you think they're going too far? Well, you know, you well, are. I don't, I don't think they. I don't think they're going too far, but nothing's going to be competitive. And these guys who have never fought before do not understand. Because you spar in a gym and you hitting a bag, Mm -hmm. when you get out there and fight and get in the ring with somebody who has a a pedigree of any kind of fight, you're finna get your ass whooped, dog. Yeah. Ain't none of these celebrities finna whoop none of these old pro fighters or none of that. It's Mm -hmm. a skill in that ring. It's a real science. You know, they Mm -hmm. throwing punches like, but you when you get hit in your mouth. I'm telling you, man, all that change. Every time one of them get hit in the mouth, their ass go right to sleep. Nate Robinson ain't wasting no damn time getting his ass down in the floor. Stop saying that. As soon as he touched Ocho, Ocho had to go too. Now, I liked Ocho better than all of them because at least he got up. He got up and had some game about him. He looked athletic. But he's not a fighter. But yeah. Logan went the distance, though. He yeah, you, you got to be impressed yeah. with that. Eight rounds with uh-huh. Floyd Mayweather. He went the distance because he's 50-some pounds heavier than Mayweather. He's oh, huge. So he took the whooping, much though. taller. He took the yeah. whooping, though. Listen to me, y'all. That okay. weight class is very, very different. He was a heavyweight fighting a dude who fought Walter Wade. Walt, look, Mayweather might have been 155. Mm. This boy, 215. I think, yeah. Mm. They said Mayweather was. 150, wow. if that. He, he couldn't have been no more than 155. Mayweather always stay right. Mm-hmm. But, man, this dude, 215. Do you understand the weight that is, yeah. man? And if you yeah. just tying him up like he was doing, that created a problem. Now, Mayweather handled him, yeah. but he handled he the best he could with that 50 pounds. That 50 pounds is rough, man. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and then Floyd is old and his fast twitch muscles is gone. Mm-hmm. Like they were. Now, let me tell you something. 15 years ago, Floyd would have knocked his ass into all up into the stands. <laughs> Even with mm-hmm. his size, the size mm-hmm. difference? Yeah, Even with his size, because, because his fast, fast twitch muscle would have, oh, okay. he would have put too much pep on. That boy's face would have been swole up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But Mayweather can't fight like he used to because it's fast twitch. But that boy can't beat Mayweather not in no years to come. None. Well, he and then he talking about he thinking seriously about considering fighting. He can't fight. <laughs> not no real fighter. You can't start mm-hmm. at 40. Wow. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I, think it's going too far, but Lamar Odom going to get his long ass put to sleep. But he's, well, he's not, not fighting, fighting a, a fighter. A boxer. Yeah. He's who he's fighting? fighting? Who he Aaron fighting? Carter, Aaron Carter, who was a pop singer, right? <laughs> He's fighting a singer. <laughs> well, Lamar says he's going to win anyway. Well, yeah, it's in we... Atlantic City coming up this, later this month. What? A of weeks. But still, I, I mean. Something. Lamar Odom going to look like a fool in there. He going to look like a complete fool. A big old giant. <laughs> if he gets to the third round. 
to get to the third round, and and once third round, he'll be tied, and you finna see his. He ain't got this will be tied. I, I don't understand why they get in the ring. Is it, is it I'm not money? Getting, I'm a celebrity. Is Let me explain something. I challenge right now uh-huh. Roy Jones Jr., Evander Holyfield, and uh-huh. Mike Tyson. What? If you guarantee me 100 million, <laughs> I'm getting Tyson? that with any one of your ass. I'm going on in there. You you'll be a rich dead man. Okay. They're running uh, from him on lemonade commercials. On. All right, we'll we'll have more of this ignorance. All show. his punches gonna be in my back. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Summertime means you may see an increase of bugs and insects, the thing, yes. one of the things I hate most in life. Uh, so what do you guys think is the most hated insect or bug in America? What do you think it is, Steve? Mosquitoes. Good I, guess, I Junior. Mosquitoes. What do you I think? I think it's the damn roach. Okay, what about you, nephew? Give me the question again. Wow. <laughs> Man, wow. What is the most- the hard one. No, it wasn't. What is your name? No. What's the most hated uh, bug in America? (laughs) What do you think that is? Tommy. Using a sentence. I go with ants. Ants? Ants? That's the most hated bug in America? Okay. You asked me. Okay. (laughs) Twice. (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, not surprising, Steve, you were right. It is the roach, the cockroach. 39% what? of wow. Americans Hell say yeah. they hate them. Because yeah. it symbolizes an infestation. It symbolizes they in your crib. You nasty. Mm-hmm. It just, you can't, you, you can explain a mosquito. But when a roach come across the table, you mm-hmm. can't explain <laughs> his ass. <laughs> Yo, black ass, saw me <laughs> cut this light on. <laughs> oh, no, that ain't coming out. These so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Spiders, ants, mosquitoes, termites, ticks, bees, and wasps in that order. And okay. I don't like None wasps. of them. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Wasps, man, no uh-huh. All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 <laughs> minutes after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to ask the CLO. Our chief love officer, Steve Harvey, is in the building. This one is from Tina in Seattle. Tina writes, I'm 44 years old and my husband is 54. He's in a men's organization and we have a lot of social engagements that we attend. The other wives are very bougie and I feel as though I don't fit in because I don't wear brand names and designer labels like they do. I've told my husband that I'm uncomfortable and he suggested I get my makeup professionally done for the next event and get a stylist to help me shop. I'm not that type of woman and I don't enjoy these events. Should I try to please him by fitting in? Well, listen, you don't have to do nothing. You're an adult woman. You get to make decisions yourself. If you don't like it, don't go. But now, somebody down there dressed up. Uh oh. Somebody down there with the makeup on. That's the other side of the game. You know, mm-hmm. that's what he like. That's what he want. Now, if you don't want to give it to him, once again, absolutely your priority. You do not have to. Mm. Somebody down at the men's organization mm. got all that on, professionally done, stylish. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's saying, "Wow, I like that. I wish my girl did that." Now, once again, you don't have to. Maybe you one of them people that think he got to take you the way he is. You know, she you could do she's that. She's not that kind of woman. That's well, you know, you ain't that it. kind of woman. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that's cool. I, I ain't mad at you, sister. You don't have to be. I think she should try it. Yeah, well, that's my suggestion. <laughs> but, you know, once again, I can't, you know, I haven't been in a lot of HR meetings, so I know not to <laughs> say certain things. So just that's do like, like you want to. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, go on, do like you want to. All right, Tina. Moving on to Kennedy. Excuse me, go ahead. (laughs) Kennedy in Detroit says, My boyfriend and I have been together for a few years, and we're open and honest about everything. He said, I am the love of his life. But he often mentions how he broke up his, uh, broke his last girlfriend's heart by cheating on her. He told me he texted her one day recently to see how she's doing and to make sure she doesn't still hate him. Is it normal for him to want to fix things with her? Let that ride. Um, Tommy, what you talking about? (laughs) I'm listening. 
I'm listening, you know. Now you saying Just, something. What you about letting Well, he, he's, he, he feels bad for what he's done. So he wants to at least apologize. He's moved on. No. He got a new girl. No, him. no. You don't no. see that? No, that ain't what he's doing. What he he doing? called to see if she still hate him. Because if she don't, he got some conversation for her. He want to go back. I said, dog, ain't no man. Men don't even do closure. And he ain't trying to get closed. You don't want to see if she still hate me. Yeah. And if she don't, then what? Where, where we go after that? Uh-huh. I ain't with it, dog. So the girlfriend's question, is it normal for him to want to fix things with her? Fix it for what? Mm-hmm. Fix it for what? You cheated on the girl. You broke her heart. What? You want to fix what? You could say, I'm sorry, but you probably tried that already. Remember? Mm-hmm. Mm. Coming up, it is our last break of the day, and at 49 minutes after the hour, we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys, our last break of the day on this Tuesday. Did we learn Absolutely anything today? great day. Well, uh, we learned more oh about boxing. Steve talked about fighting again, mm-hmm. you know, the celebrity yeah. boxing matches. Yeah. We and also roaches. somebody can be. On the strawberry left. That's what we do. Oh, this fool. <laughs> this is the dumbest. Ugh, you no. idiot. Well, where these dudes be getting from with all this truth? What is wrong it? with the truth? It you see where we're at now? <laughs> yes. If the truth I is going to make that. you feel worse than the lie, then why would you not want the lie? That's Wait, some what? logic right there. That's Let me some hear this logic, again. Mr. Harvey. If the truth is going to make you feel badly, uh-huh. why would you not want the lie if it'll yes. make you feel better yeah. or okay? That, that, yeah. Make That's some sense saying. up in here, man. It makes, it makes sense. great sense. We want the truth because it's a lie. Truth. It doesn't yeah. matter how it makes you feel if it's a lie. A lie right? is good sometimes. Speak Carl. for yourself, Carla. We don't want I'm, I'm speaking for myself. If the truth <laughs> is hurtful, if the truth is damaging, those two things, hurtful and damaging, why would you tell it? Yes. Well, because let me say this. With the letter, with the strawberry letter, once she found out the truth, then she knows who she's dealing with. Don't you it agree? It was just Kelly? a towel, yeah. Carla. It's just a towel. It wasn't guys, just a towel. He we, admitted to what happened. Yeah, you guys can't. That's his can't Which think is what for we're us. talking about. He said Which is lie. what we're talking about. You can't think for us. We want the truth. We can handle the truth. We no, know you can deal with the no, truth. Yes, can't. we can. Jack you don't Nicholas like how said we y'all it. can't handle the truth. Yeah. He wasn't you can't handle the truth. He wasn't yeah. talking about us. We yeah, can, you just don't man. like how we react, but we can hand, we'd rather hear the truth than a lie any day. Trust me. Try no, it sometimes. That's, that's you guys have never tried get. it. You and guys you, there's have a reason never tried why. it. Y'all, yeah, we have. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh it's, really? It's called busted. <laughs> so let me ask you a yeah, question, Steve. Yeah, this is all about so, you. Yeah, I'm Well, listening. maybe. No, okay. No, go ahead, Ash. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I can't. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you can't. Go ahead. You finna get a lie, Carla. Just go ahead. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> gonna lie anyway. Well, no matter what. Watch, watch. Ask me the question, watch. Okay, so back Way back in the day, yeah. Maybe I asked this question. This to to all of y'all, the fellas. Have you ever been yes. busted or got caught cheating yes. and admitted to the <laughs> truth? Yes. Nope. No. Oh, oh no. wait. What? Steve? But she no. sees you. You're caught in Why the act. Not clean in the yeah. act. Yeah. This yeah. is but, the but dumbest the was, thing I've I ever heard. To it. Yeah. Nope. But so what did you say? You. What did you say? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> What are you saying? Your eyes are lying. <laughs> Your eyes are lying to you. Okay. So we y'all you just, y'all, when naked, you saw me, did you right? talk to me? Exactly. <laughs> or you just saw me? Just like that. <laughs> if you didn't talk to me, I'm telling you right now, that wasn't that was nothing. Don't me. try to flip it. So, so you have an identical twin. There's <laughs> a lot of people out here, but uh, let me tell you something. I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. It makes perfect sense. What hotel for was you. it? What difference does it make? I know you when I see you. What are you talking Carl, about? What hotel? I that has something to do with it? The hotel I'm naked over there because my bathroom broke and they let me use That's it. it. That's all. It makes sense. A man can't take a bath? God damn. Oh, that's a good one right there. I like but that you, one. You weren't, in, you were in the bed. you weren't in the bath. Girl. I just got the out the shower. 
So, ooh, ooh, watch it. They time. didn't have no towels in there, Anna. and I was drying off under the sheet. Under the sheet, yes. Damn. yes. That's it. That's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. God, okay, well, this, guys, this, come on. But, Give us more credit than that. No. Yeah, now no. we stupid? Yeah. No, that's, no. That's what we a lie, know you're not that's stupid. That's what a lie says. Listen to me. No, no, no. We know you're not stupid. Mm-hmm. That's why we're going to try this lie. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... But here's what I said. But why yes. would I cheat on you? <laughs> <laughs> That's your question. I love how no. you guys try to flip why? it. I love no, here it. Go, why? Here go, I here go, here go, here go, here uh-huh. go, here go. Look, I don't. I, I'm not really supposed to reveal this to nobody. Steve. <laughs> but I am an undercover. Yeah, agent. you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm an undercover agent. That's, right. that's all I'm saying. Okay. 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 And you you are under the covers. That's where I caught you. Under the and covers. And I'm on a case. Okay. I'm uh-huh. on a case. We working. Right. Once okay. again. It's working. Uh-huh. Shirley, once again. Yes. That Steve. wasn't me. <laughs> it was you. Stop. It then was, who, was who was it? Who was it? It wasn't you. But who was it? Who was it? I don't know. Who did you see? <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yes, but I just yeah. told you I wasn't there. It was you. You better hope I'm not armed (laughs) while you're doing these lies. Why would I cheat on you? (laughs) See, that's how people Do you have a picture of me there? Do I have a picture of you there? Yes. Yes. You ain't never. Oh, no, I don't have a picture. I don't need a picture. I know you. I know who you are. I didn't take a picture on my phone or anything, no, because I know you. Prove it. Yeah. So, me taking a picture on my phone means what? You yeah, will then admit to the truth once you <laughs> no, see the no, picture? No, oh, no, no. no. Oh, so the lie no. continues. Uh-huh. Okay, oh. so yeah, I have a picture. Now yeah. what? We got uh-huh. the picture. Look at my phone. Is this you? That, no, no, you know who that is? Who? That's I'm my listening. twin brother. We were separated at birth. Yeah, birth. And he can finally oh. show back up. That's who oh, that is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. I know he. I didn't even know he was in town. That's who that is. Oh, okay. So where were you? And if you cry, I'll throw phone? my phone at you. No, <laughs> you take the picture. And, and, and where were say, you? Uh huh. You take the picture. I just say, where you see Carl at? And I just leave it at that. Who what? is Carl? The person look like me. Just leave right at that. Where? Carl, where you see Carl at? Oh God. And we done. We ain't admitting to it. The, but do you all understand how stupid this sounds? This hey, listen to me. Y'all have a great day. And these ladies got to go and work through some things because they got issues. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 